So let's put them up here real quick, and we'll, we'll dive into just on the surface of both of them. The turning point, um, let's finish up the turning point on the home life and when you decided to um, to buy the to to buy the business. Now I know you said your wife was also a, a fitness trainer and in and athletics. So did that make the decision to buy a gym easier or more difficult? No, that was that that made it, um, and that and that may have been a, a you know if somebody's watching this and they're thinking about buying a business that that may have been um, the the worst part of that decision was to take a hobby and turn it into a business. Uh, I have ruined two hobbies in my life by turning them into a business. I, I don't recommend that, uh, and I wouldn't, and I will not do it again. Uh, but I, I can tell you that the, you know, when it becomes, you know, 24/7, 365, it's not as fun anymore <laughs> as when it's a hobby, right? And you realize that as you're there running the business and you're watching everybody else have fun doing what used to be your hobby, <laughs> you can you can almost turn on you. Right, it can almost turn on you. You have to be careful to maintain uh, enthusiasm for what what you what you eventually probably lose if you turn that hobby into a business. I did that with the golf business when I was in my twenties. I did the same thing. But the the you know the, the other thing I want to be, be completely transparent and and you know Amy is is was never uh, Amy was clear that. You know, another alternative would be better for her, and, and Amy was clear that uh, you know going to Houston would be okay, but not something that she wanted to do. The real trigger for me, to you know, the, the actual trigger, it was the actual trigger for a lot of people when they leave a company. I got a bad boss, and I <laughs> yeah. didn't I didn't leave that company, and I didn't leave those coworkers. The minute I got that boss, I began to plan my exit strategy, and I began to squirrel away money and, and try to find a way to make a, a, a graceful exit out of that company. And that's the that's the number one. So those of you that have employees, <laughs> listen up. It's true. The number one reason that good people leave companies is because they get a bad boss, and it's not because they don't fit there or they don't like it there. It's just that 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 burden uh, becomes too great. And that was the trigger for me. Yeah, and for, for those of you bosses out there, remember this, just because you're trying to hide it, everybody knows. <laughs> you know, there, there's a, there's an old saying that CEOs never want to never want to let their people give them performance reviews because they don't want to know their, their flaws. And it's like, they, they know, they, they know already, you know, I know I've been a good boss and I've, I'm quite sure I've been a bad boss at, at some mm -hmm. points in, in, you know, in different companies. Um, and you know, it's no matter what I did, I'm quite sure that, that people knew it. I mean, it wasn't anything on purpose, but anyway, but I think that's epic gold. I mean, that right there really is just, you know, the, the epic gold for the people who own businesses is be a bit, you know, be a better boss and, and, um, you know, and the other piece there that I love was turning a hobby into a, into a business. And a lot of people think it's going to be great. But it's kind of like when you're forced to do something, it, there, there's a, I think there's a difference. I think, in my opinion, if a hobby is something you wake up thinking about every single day and doing every single day, and if you don't do it for a day or two, you really, I'll say, Jones to do it, it might be a good thing. In my opinion, it might be a good thing to turn into a business because maybe it is really what you're, you know, what you're looking at doing. Like, as an example, people, if you're on Periscope, or blab every day. Think about contacting us and becoming a show host because obviously you love to do this stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but I think there's that line that you that I, you're 100 right there, Sean. There's that line that you there's that line that you draw that when you cross over it, you know, it becomes drudgery. You know, it's kind of like the, the last quick point I want to make. It's kind of like when people look at professional athletes and go, "How can you retire?" You know, you're just playing a game. It's like, yeah, it turned at some point into a really just drudgery. You know, it's like, geez, I have to, I have to do this again today. So let's look. Go ahead. Well, you can, and and I think, and obviously, like everything, that's a matter of of, of managing mindset, right? And that's very, very important. Managing mindset and maintaining that. I I think that the thing that you need to recognize, you know, like you know, when I turned my passion for playing golf into being the golf business, I, I didn't get to play golf anymore when everybody else was, right? Yeah. That's just the reality. And the same thing true, if you're running the gym, you don't get to work out, and everybody else is having fun working out, you're running the gym. So you, need, you just need to recognize that, that 
that enthusiast passion is, is probably going to be replaced by different activities and you need to be prepared to manage that mindset of that transition and running any business is, is not easy right and so it is it's very important that that you know you feel passionate about the problem that you solve and you're clear about the problem that you solve with your your business and you and you stay you know and you remain passionate about that uh, just recognize that I think a lot of people naively enter you know enter into business that you know because they like it as as a hobbyist and they they they're disappointed as I was to discover that well, I don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, because goodness knows, Sean, the worst thing that can happen is when you're bench pressing 450 and somebody comes over and needs a towel or didn't get their paycheck right. Not a good situation to be in. Be, you know, it's not like you know, it's not like you say, "Wait a minute, wait till I'm done with my next rep." It's like you know, and they kind of have a little leverage over you when you're underneath. There's always, yeah, there's always <laughs> something to be cleaned or fixed or tweaked. Or it never ends. It never ends. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at your business a little bit from a, when you said you were over branding because I think that really starts to get us into the the aftermath. So there was a turning point in the branding and the marketing, I think of your of your health club and your fitness your, your fitness center that you know got you to that got you to start to make a, a a change and do things differently, right? Sure. Well, you know, and and I'll mention uh, you know across my office from me is a whole rack of Dan Kennedy books, and you mentioned. You know Charlie and GKIC earlier, and 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 I can tell you that you know what what happens to me is what happens to a lot of small business people, and and uh, Dan Kennedy was one of the triggers for me in in, in figuring that figuring it out, uh, and and but that you, you got all of these people that are coming to you um, in the guise of consultative selling. Uh, and they, so they're coming to you as consultants, as a business owner or manager, and the reality is they are media salespeople, right? And and that's what and they they they're trained to come with a fine consultative hat. And but I assure you that if they work for the radio station, that the media that your business should be advertising in is absolutely going to be radio, right? <laughs> Regardless of whether or not that makes any sense for you, and and that's the reality. So as you're a new business owner and you want to be nice to people, and especially if you're in a community like we are with a, with a physical business, gosh, you don't want to be rude to any of these people. You know, they might be prospects or they might talk to someone. So you entertain all these folks and they consult you into a lot of bad spots. And they can consult you into spending a whole lot of money uh, branding, getting your name out there, doing all these, you know, awareness campaigns that don't actually drive action. And what we learned, of course, from Dan Kennedy and JKIC was the marketing triangle, right? We learned media message market match. And what, what I had to learn about that fitness business, and it's it's a unique business, Chris. It's a hardcore weightlifting gym. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've got a little bit of going on. <laughs> It's a, it's a hardcore weightlifting gym, and uh, our primary uh, ideal avatar is a young dude. And what we sell those young dudes is confidence. And as much as, and as much as, you know, the radio or the newspaper or that, they they might touch those people sometimes. They do not have the ability to put that triangle on that young dude in my community. They're not targeted enough with their media to match my message to my market. And so that activity of branding was was literally blowing up our profitability ineffectively. And we had to make changes. Yeah, and, and you're so right. And it's so um, it's so interesting because I mean being in the business, being in the business I'm in, of course, my main thrust for people is you should be out there on video because video is a very powerful, very powerful medium. But whenever I work with a client, the first thing we do is go through that and we figure out what really is the right media for you. Because if it's, you know, if you're going to come to me and your ideal client is 65 years old and listens to NPR, now there's a good chance that there's a good chance we're not a good fit for you. And we would steer you in the direction of, of trying to get, you know, trying to get ads on radio and that sort of thing, because you've got to go where your you know, you got to go where your um, you know, where your clientele is. Like you said, media message and, and market. 
So, um, so you did what I'll say what most business owners do, which is throw a lot of money, or at least it, those that have the ability to throw a lot of money at all the advertising and and branding and getting your name out there, and it kind of and it kind of sounds like it kind of fell flat a little bit, or maybe a lot. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to diminish it, but I. <laughs> well, this you know this was happening at the same time that the economy was going into it into a terrible slide, right? And and we had a. You know, we had a rough time in the late, uh, you know, 08 or yeah. 09, right? That was that was tough, and uh, so we, we had to we had to really learn how to focus. We had to really learn, uh, you know, how to how to run the business in a very effective way, and then how to do our marketing in such a way that we, you know, very specifically, you know, dialed in that triangle that we knew that avatar. We spoke to that avatar, and you know, one of the things that I, that I learned in in video, and, and this is this is a, a fantastic tip, and this is actual uh, actual actor training. Is I learned to communicate specifically to one person. I learned to talk to you, and I, I would think about you and visualize you, and through the camera, I will speak to you, right? And when I do, when I did that, and I knew the dude. There was a dude, that, and, and, and he has a name. His name is Gavin. He was a he, he was a member. He was a, he was my ideal avatar. And I would go on video, and I would speak to Gavin about what I knew would motivate him. And in other people that then looked like him, right, would see that and have this. God, he's talking to me, <laughs> right? They have that moment. So that in actor training, they talk about speak to one to communicate with many. Right. right. So, but you have to speak. You want to speak directly and specifically to one in, in a very specific emotional basis. And what will happen is there are many people that are in a similar place, and when they see that, it will communicate to them in a very powerful emotional way. And you can convey that effectively in video and very uniquely in video. And and I think. You know, obviously in branding, you know, we stick our logo on stuff or we put our logo out in the community. That's, yes, yes. I mean, really, you know, you throw money in the air or whatever, right? But when when I can deliver, you know, especially with social media now, right, and we, we can talk about this if you want to, but we can, I can, I can dial, I can deliver that message with a very high probability to that audience. And I can use video to do it in a, in a, in a way that I can't really replicate in any other way. I can do it every day. I can do it twice a day, right? And I can and I can nail it. I can deliver it right into the literally right into their hands, right? <laughs> I yep. can deliver it right into their freaking hands. Yep, and, exactly. And I can do it for free. It's extraordinary, right? This is, this is unfathomable to me, right? I have I have a 4K video right here in my hand, right? Yeah. And I can deliver it for free right into your little hand. And it's just a remarkable thing, man. It's just it's it's a true revolution in in human communication and a complete game changer for business. Yeah, definitely. And that kind of leads us into the aftermath. We to watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now. You'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.